If you are a business owner, I don't think I would shock you or offend you if I said that running a business can get messy quite quickly, especially with great services like all the Google apps like Google Sheets and Google Docs and Google Slides. We might be creating procedures and presentations and all these different documents for our business that help us, but it can get messy quickly and everything can get lost very, very quickly. I'm gonna show you how we can create a very easy and centralized spreadsheet like this that adds any Google Docs, Google Sheets, or Google presentations that we name in a certain way. You can see here, I've added the prefix of my business name to all of these documents. And because of that, they all get added to this nicely centralized Google spreadsheet, which now can start to act as the knowledge hub or the knowledge base for my business. And any new employees I bring on, they can just be directed to the spreadsheet and they have access to the standards of procedures, they have access to contract templates, they have access to everything. And I don't have to go find all these different documents or maintain another document that keeps all these documents in place, for example. This is the heart of this centralized database. All we have is just a three-step zap. And you can see in this case, I start this one with new document. In this one, I start with new spreadsheet, and you could start it with new slide, for example, as another option. Unfortunately, in Zapier, there isn't an option to, say, for example, capture any new documents in Google Docs. So we have to create a duplicate for each one, but nevertheless, it's not the end of the world. But you can see they follow all the same structure, and they're super simple. It's just new document in the Google Doc, and the most important bit, the most important bit that's, the bit that's gonna stop every single document being added to our spreadsheet is this step right here. All we need to say is, if I edit this quickly, is does the title of the document start in a certain way? So title from the previous step starts with GWCA. And if you want to be even more specific, you could add in the dash, for example, or you can add any certain prefix, or you can make it, does the document name end with a certain prefix? I like to make it start with a certain prefix because it's just a bit cleaner for me, but that's all the ready is to it. And then in this case, if it meets that filter, and you can see I use that same condition in all of these duplicated things. Title starts with GWCA, exact same. I just duplicated the zap over and over. And then all I do is add it to the spreadsheet that we have just created that's gonna be our centralized database and our centralized base of knowledge for all of our team members. And all we need to do is make sure that we've selected the correct spreadsheet, we've selected the correct worksheet, and we drop in what we need, the title, the direct link, that's gonna save a ton of time, and when it was created. One important thing to know about this automation though is it's not gonna catch if you update the name because it's not a new document, obviously. In that case, it's an existing document, and we don't even have the option to monitor for updated documents. So that's unfortunately just a drawback of uh, Google Docs and the integration it has with Zapier. So we just gotta be sure that if, we, if we're gonna be using this, it will only work for documents going forward. And we need to make sure that we add this prefix right when we start creating the file, as opposed to we name it and then later decide we wanna add it. Those ones we would just need to go manually add to our now centralized dashboard. I hope you found this video useful. I'm trying to do more of these smaller, quick tutorials that I've found have been really helpful for either my clients or for my own business. And just showing you what the zap needs to look like when you set these up. Obviously, what we've set up isn't gonna be available on the Zapier free plan because it has more than two steps because we use the filter and then it's, we've got another step. So we wouldn't be able to do this on a Zapier free plan, but the amount of headache and administration that it saves me from doing, I totally warrant and suggest that you sign up for the Zapier cheapest plan will get you there with this very simple setup. Obviously, if you don't wanna go set this up yourself, then you can just reach out to me because I am a certified Zapier expert and this is what I do after having worked with 50 plus clients I've been in the automation space since 2016. Otherwise, if you liked this video, then I appreciate if you would give it a thumbs up and subscribe because I am gonna continue putting out these bite-sized tutorials that will give you quick time savings in your business and also help your own business become streamlined and win more customers.